All right, here we go. Patricia, good to see you. You as well. Yeah, so we're, uh, I wish I hit record on this a few minutes ago because we're sitting here talking about things that, you know, what your family's up to, what my family's up to, what our friends and family are looking forward to in the new year, and we're recording this on New Year's Eve. So if you're watching, I know I can't believe it's already the end of the year. Like this is crazy. Where did it go? Time flies, and you know that's one of the things that I've been talking to some of my friends about. The time is going to pass. What we know for sure, time is going to pass. And and my friends too. They you know they wake up and they do what they got to do. They go to work. I have residual income on the mind all the time. Right. Um, I used to be a plumber. Uh, my wife used to work at Starbucks. You know we were very much the the people down the street. Um, I think I was probably her number one customer, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, well, we, uh, when we got married, I moved up to the Seattle area, and you can't, you know, you look in any direction, and there's Starbucks everywhere, so. Well, it's the same growing up in Vancouver. Um, yeah, every corner, and if they don't have a corner, well, then they've got plans to be on there, so. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we were doing, and then uh, I ended up getting hurt on my job, had to figure out something, a different way to, to make money. And right around that time is the first time I ever heard about this idea of residual income. And as we're ending 2018 and heading into 2019, I know a lot of people are interested in making extra money. And one of the things I was hoping we could talk about, cause I think, it would, I think our friends would find this interesting is okay. So making more money, that's, you know, can't argue with that. That sounds like a good idea. Right, there are different sure. kinds. There are different kinds of money though. Yeah. Um, by the way, I have an air quote addiction and I haven't gotten help yet and I don't want to because I like doing air quotes. I, I have the utmost respect for people that do air quotes all the time. <laughs> I, wish I, could, I wish I could do that. I just always look like a bunny rabbit when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, okay, they may come out occasionally, but... So residual income and linear income, um, I'm trying to think, is there any other income, any other type? Those are the main two. I think that's- Well, yeah, I think that's really it. So I think for most people, it's, it's people want to, to have an income coming in without having to work, you know, an extra, an extra eight hour day as well, right? Like that's, sure. we want more time with our families. Yeah. That's important. That sounds dreamy. Time and money. All in one. Yeah. Is that even possible? <laughs> I think that's, that's where a lot of people's minds go. I, I think back uh, when I first started looking into the whole idea of residual income, it didn't seem at first like regular people. Like that's not a thing regular people get to do, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're just a normal, regular, you have to be special to get residual income, I think. That's what I used to think. And and actually that that I kind of went on this emotional roller coaster, like really bad emotional roller coaster for years where I initially so when I lost when I when I couldn't go back to work uh, as a plumber anymore, I just the timing of things, my neighbor hit me up about a work from home kind of a thing. And it was an MLM. It was a full blown old school very stereotypical MLM, and I didn't know any better. Um, not scary at all, right? Oh, yeah, no. I, I thought this was the greatest thing ever. I could not believe this <laughs> sounded like the, the, the core of the pitch that I totally bought, hook, line, and sinker, was uh, work hard now. I have no problem working hard. Like, sign me up. I love working hard. I love doing the job all the way. I think most people do. For sure, um, yeah. Um, but do that for three to five years – and you can cash checks every month for the rest of your life. An income you can pass on to your kids. That was the core of the pitch. And it was based around some mechanics that at the time, to a naive kid that I was, seemed reasonable. It seemed relatively logical. So I, I, I flew into it. My, um, the peak of my achievement over the next four and a half years this is embarrassing to admit. I have a picture that proves this was the, the peak of my achievements. In terms of residual income, the biggest residual income check I got the next four and a half years was $127 and, uh, and change. 
<laughs> That's enough to pay about a third of my cell phone bill today. Well, yeah, I was just gonna say that might fill my tank up like for uh, a week if yeah. I don't go anywhere with the kids and their activities. <laughs> yeah. So, but but get but understand that I could wake up the the first day of the next month and know for sure I had about a hundred dollars coming, no matter what. Right. <laughs> and there you go. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so I had this tiny little taste. Because that check did come. It came. Like, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, it was it was just enough to be a, a dirty tease. It was just, oh man, if I can only if I can only add a zero to that, a right. thousand bucks isn't that much money, I think for most of us. But to have it just coming in every month, that sounds good. Anyway, I spent years, years and years and years chasing residual income, chasing different business models. Um, I've started companies over the years. I'm a, I've become a serial entrepreneur. Two years ago, um, I hit a wall and I had made money. I've made a lot of money actually um, from home the last few years, uh, but I could never make residual income. Not really. And I, I think one thing that might be interesting because I see on social media a lot, a lot of people get, especially this time of year, they get sucked into home business stuff like I did. Have you, have you gone there? I think we've all gone there. Okay. But right. uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the hard part with that, of course, is you know you go in with so much excitement, and then and then what? What what happens next? Right? Yeah. Well, I know because I've done it over and over again. I think a lot of people have, and usually what happens next is you start to understand. Wait a minute, this is kind of complicated. It's very awkward for most people. You know, it's very awkward, and that's hard. Like that, that element alone, the awkwardness of a lot of the home business stuff, that is the, the you know, the, that's like a steel reinforced concrete wall that people right. run into. It's hard for people to get around that. Totally. Uh, so complicated, awkward. Sometimes they're pretty expensive. I've done some that were very expensive. Um, and what else? You have know. to convince everybody too that spending like, 50 to 70% more on something makes yes. sense because it's like a hundred percent better for you. And I mean, do you really believe that yourself? Right. I, well, at, first, I don't know. at first you do. Yeah. <laughs> and then and that you cycle. How much you have to pay every month too. Right. Right. So. Yeah. Right. Until, until you have to make that decision, you're at the gas station, you're going, okay, I really need gas. Like I really need gas, <laughs> but there's no money left in my account because of that auto ship or that subscription or whatever. Right. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. I think, okay. uh, I generally like the people in these businesses that I've participated in the last couple decades. Um, I think mostly the people are really nice. They genuinely care. They're really trying to help people. Um, in a lot of cases, the products are phenomenal. The science is really interesting. You know, there's a lot of things that look good on the surface, but what I kept doing, and I didn't realize till it was, you know, years and years and years of this had happened. I kept kind of bumping around in the dark and I am this happy go lucky, optimistic guy feeling like, yeah, let's go conquer the world together. Let's go help people. Let's go serve people. Let's go do what businesses do because good businesses are all about serving people and filling needs. That's what right. businesses do. So I was imagining, I was building all of this emotional, infrastructure around these magical MLM products. And uh, <coughs> I was just chasing my tail in, at the end of the day. And I kept, but I kept latching on to people, other people who were sincere, who were maybe one step further down the road than me. I was f drowning financially the whole time, completely dying financially. So I would grab onto somebody. Oh, you know what you're doing? Okay, let's go, you know, and let's go do this. And right. then, Six months later, I would, I, would, I would open my eyes finally and go, oh, no, this really sincere person that's helping me is also drowning. <laughs> right. That was terrible, like so terrible. Drowning people cannot help drowning people in case. Well, and it's just terrible. so sad because it's just taking so much time away from what, what's important, right? Yes. And that brings up, I think that is an interesting way to come back to here we are new year's eve 2018 uh 2019 is tomorrow time is going to pass another year has flown by yeah this is this is the wall i hit two years ago it was two years two years and a month ago 
I suddenly became acutely aware of all of this time that had passed. I'm getting old. My kids are getting, I have, I have a 14 year old now. Like I got to get my act together. I can't keep just failing. I got to actually right. think. I got to think for a change. And I think, I think that's another thing that there's so many rabbit trails here, but a lot of the home business stuff is very emotional. It has a tendency to be very, very, uh, like a lot of the decisions based, the decision making happening around home business stuff is very emotional. That has not served me ever. Never. It never has. Right. I've never gotten anywhere. Yeah. On, on, I'm just thinking, I'm just realizing this now. <laughs> Two years ago, I started looking at things differently. And, and I think just in the spirit of just sharing, giving, uh, whatever, transparency, stuff like that, for your friends, for my friend's sake, my thought is, what if we locked emotion out of the room for a change? If, if you're anything like us and, uh, you know, looking for opportunity in the new year, um, what if you locked emotion in the other room and you made a logical, uh, a sound and, you know, rational decision for a change, which, which I think we would suggest you look hard if, if you're, if uh, making money is on the mind as we head into the new year, you have choices. You can go get an extra job. That's, that's fine. That's linear income. In other words, you have to show up every day and do the work. You're trading time for money. Right. So what do you have less of in the new year if you do that? You have a lot less time for the stuff that you actually want to do. So for some, that's a good option. For some, that's not. Uh, residual income, here we are talking for 20 minutes about how elusive it is. Uh, don't want to totally discourage you. It does exist. Um, and it's actually, uh, in my last uh, last couple of years, my experience has been, it's not uh, not, a, not elusive, actually. It's, it was right in front of my face all these years. I just wasn't seeing it. So I think I would encourage your friends, my friends to start to make some decisions around what kind of income do I want, residual or linear, because that's going to dictate your path big time, you know. For sure, for sure. And then, uh, and then make a decision, make a logical, uh, rational decision rather than doing what I've done over the years, being a sucker for a good pitch, especially at this time of the year. Oh, wait, I can lose weight and make money? Sign me up. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Does the business model I'm make sense? I'm trying to lose that 10 pounds, I think, from about five years ago. So. Same here. Same here. <laughs> Does the business model make sense? You know, follow the money. Uh, where are the customers? Are there customers? Right. A, lot of the, a lot of the whole business stuff is this internal consumption engine kind of thing. And it just it has a tendency to collapse on itself. And I think any thinking person, uh, and I don't mean for that to sound harsh, because I'd like to think that I've been a thinking person, but the reality is emotion was first. And then I would think about it six months later and go, oh, no, that wasn't a good move. Right. <laughs> Oops. We've all been there. Yeah. And then, and then you just lost six months and maybe you lost 500 or a thousand or a couple thousand dollars plus reputation plus maybe some friendships it can be rough yeah it's hard for sure yeah so so what to do I mean what you and I have been talking about comes back to I think common sense logic looking at how does business happen around the world how do good businesses thrive what are the components of a decent you know solid uh, good business Forget about home business, just any business. Okay. It's funny. I think, I think, ooh, here comes some air quotes. I think you put the word home <laughs> in front of the word business, and then it becomes a logic free zone for so many people, you know? Right? Well, I don't know about you, but when I hear home business, I still see, you know, the, the lady driving the pink, uh, Cadillac and showing up at my mom's house in the early 1970s or, yep. you know. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of that. And, and it's, you know, even stuff like that might be your friend's cup of tea. It might be my friend's cup of tea. Totally. You just gotta, you just gotta go in. I, you don't have to do anything, but if you make decisions here, uh, go in with your eyes open and just understand that if the pink Cadillac is your goal, 
you have a mountain of work. You've got Everest between you and that pink Cadillac, and you probably have flip flops on. Like you're gonna <laughs> want to think hard about this. <laughs> totally, totally. Because it's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal, yeah. and, and a lot of those home business incomes are very linear. You mm-hmm. can't make money, but it's a lot like having another job, which right. that's what you want. Great. You know, the nice thing about a lot of the home business job type things is you can have some income coming in, um, and it's, you know, for a lot of people, it's not that hard to get some income coming in. You just got to stay on the treadmill. It's like you got to show up and do the work right. every day to keep that check coming in. Totally. Mm-hmm. So I like to uh, do things different the last couple of years. I don't know if uh, Cynthia told you, but we, my family and I, so I have 14 year old, 11 year old, and my, my wife and I, we left, so we live on Maui, Hawaii, and we left last November. I actually, I actually left in October and then my family joined me in November um, overseas. We left the country for 51 weeks. That's amazing. We goofed off. We traveled all <laughs> over the place. I lost track of how many countries we visited. It was plane, train. Uh, I mean, every mode of transportation you can imagine, especially in Asia. Talk about wild and crazy. Holy cow. No kidding. Sometimes it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> But we had this crazy adventure, very spontaneous, one-way tickets to wherever was next. We didn't have much of a plan at all. We knew we wanted to see London. We knew we wanted to see Scotland. We knew we wanted to see Athens. You know, there were a few kind of major cities that we knew right, we, yeah. we wanted to see. Cool. But we, but we had no plan. We just left. <laughs> and we didn't know if it was going to be a three-month trip or a three-year trip. And I'm thinking back to when I was a plumber. I never even dreamt that kind of stuff. Like, why would I? Right. It, was, it would have been torture. And, and I think the kind of adventure and the kind of spontaneity, the kind of mobility, the kind of flexibility, freedom, those sorts of words, those kinds of things that a lot of us really want, I'm just going to straight up say you cannot have, if you're tied to your occupation, if you're tied to your income, if you have to keep showing up to make your money, yep. then you can't, you know, how do you leave for a year? I don't know. Maybe you save for 20 years. Or 30 years. Maybe you do that when you retire. Yeah. I don't know. I guess that's what most people would do. Yeah, but, but then what, right? Like if you've done it, if you save for 20 years and then you do it, then what do you have to look forward to next? Like if that's your trip of a lifetime, I don't know. Right. Like I always think that way. Like I, if you love what you've done, like you're going to want to do it again. And, and yes. so you, you need to set your life up to be able to do that, right? <laughs> Yeah, my wife and I this morning in bed, we were talking about, okay, when are we traveling again? She was on Facebook looking at our, she was looking at that whole, you know, it shows you where you were a year ago. Oh, when you those first are so up. daunting sometimes. <laughs> we, we, were, we were downtown Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in a high rise uh, condo watching fireworks. That's amazing. Ago, basically right now, a year ago. It was, oh, it was so cool. So and cool. It just made me, I love So I don't know. Anyway, I'm getting off on a lot of these rabbit trails, but <laughs> I, <laughs> we could talk and talk. I, uh, I guess the, the, the message, uh, I, I guess I hope to inspire people to take action. I think that's the point of us showing up on video here today. Um, I love seeing people take shots. I love seeing people take chances, take risks. I love seeing people make changes. And I think you said it yesterday. We were talking yesterday and you said this time of year, people are more open to making changes than any other time of the year. And Absolutely. You're, you're totally right. And I hope our friends take this message to heart. You know, be brave, step out, do something different. You're capable. I hope so too. I mean, everybody deserves to live the life they want to live, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and you can choose to be in the driver's seat of your own life. Or, uh, you know, a lot of the people I love most in life, it's like I, I look at them and it's like they're sitting in the passenger seat of their own life and they're sleeping. Right. It just yeah. whatever happens, happens, I guess. And that's, you know, I, I don't want to come off as judgmental. They can live their life however they want to live. I just, the people that I love the most, I want them to go to, you know, Kuala Lumpur with me. Like, let's go have some adventures. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. 
anyway. Okay, we should probably cut this off. Cause yeah, I could just we'll talk all day. I agree. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do this more though. Let's uh, um, we'll keep up our conversations and try to record more of them and see if maybe this is useful for for some of our friends. I think that would be great. Okay. All right. All right. Chat soon. Happy New all Year. Right. Same yeah. to you. Ciao.